increase uh, the blob size. Okay, that's pretty ugly. We're going to make the blob size 800. So now you've got a big mound there, you can have some sort of a. Uh, you can have this at the centre of the nebula. So it seems like that's the core, and that's sort of the outer mantle of the nebula, which is fair enough. Now, another thing you can do with nebulas are nebula paths, and these are quite tricky, uh, mostly because um, you'll set out a path and the nebula will basically follow it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a pointer here. Now, the way I did that was to hold down the Alt button and to left click anywhere on the map. So I can add another one here, another one here, another one here. And you can see that's created a long path by cl uh, clicking Alt and uh, left clicking each time. Now to change settings on each of these paths you double click on the path and you get this new window pop up. And we're going to select path type to nebula field. I'm going to add this to 5000 so it's a bit higher on the map. And you've got the nebula up here and that's got a bit higher. I'm going to make this one a bit lower just to add a sense of balance. Now to alter this nebula it's very similar to the other nebulas. Um, I'm going to create a drag box over this nebula and this will pop up which is the settings for nebula as you've seen for the other two nebulas. Now we're going to make this instead of the colour it is now we're going to remove all that green and we're going to add a hint of blue. And now you've got quite a magneta sort of colour. We're going to add an underlying colour. Uh, and it's going to be pretty much the opposite. We'll see how this looks. So you've got a purple second layer. And an original pink layer. Now, it looks quite nice. But I'm not too keen on the way it's sort of blotching. So, I'm going to alter the splats and make them slightly bigger. And it will also reduce... Uh, gameplay lag. So there we go. It's a bit more subtle. You can see it just as well though. And I think that looks quite nice. I'm going to alter this. Minus 500. Now one thing I haven't pointed out are these uh, dimensions here. You'll see these on quite a few objects. The X is where it is on the horizontal sort of plane from where you're uh, looking at on this map. So for me it'll be from the left of my screen to the right of my screen. The Z will be from the top to the bottom of the screen. And the Y will be how high it is, so towards you on the screen or away from you on the screen. In this instance, this point is going to move downwards. And it's the same on stuff like planets. You've got these positions here. And you can change it to how you please. So you can have 7000 and that will move it up. Alternatively, you can change the height of things objects, not so much paths, using the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. So if I was to pre uh, press minus, you'd see it move down. And you can keep on pressing it down until it's where you want. However, for individual objects, this can be really, really tedious. If you want to select multiple objects and do it, you can just uh, drag box over everything, and you can do the same. Now we've got a nice map sort of forming here. Uh, what I'm going to do is add a neutral star base right in the middle of it. So I'm going to go to back on the menus and I'm going to select races I'm going to go to federation, federation stations and Feder we have an ENT era station so it doesn't o uh, overpower you when you're actually playing in ENT era. If you were to have a TNG era station and it was actually on a team uh, you'd get wiped out by it pretty uh, instantly. So we'll stick that there. You can have dry docks. We'll have like three of them. A sensory platform. Just basically add whatever you want to uh, have a nice little base in the middle of the system. There we go. Nice and simple. Now these will be default set to team 1 which is normally going to be your team. So I'm going to set these to zero, so they just basically sit there, they're not going to do anything.
We'll have the star bases active as team one, so if you wanted to, you could uh, heal yourself during a battle. Now, team one is normally the player team, so that's going to be your team as you're playing the game. Um, if you want to add stuff to different teams, you can have this thing here, and say this can be a hostile one, so you can add this to say team two. So if you've got two teams on the map, this will be on one of the other teams. The opposite team. If you have three teams on the map, this would still be on team two, so it would oppose two other players, yourself and another one. However, if you were to set this to eight and you were to have like three players on a on a uh, game, this would attack any player. It would be opposing to all teams. So we're going to keep that as two. And just to point it out as a different uh, player, we're going to call it the rogue station. Five because Star Trek likes numbers. Okay, what else can I go through? For quicker navigation around the menus, you can press the keys on your keyboard. So if I want to select Starbase TNG, I can press F1, which corresponds to the numbers which you can already see. So I've got a massive station here. Now to discard that, I can right click so I can select it using F1 and right click there and it's gone. Now to go back on the menu I can press tab. Tab again and to go all the way back I keep on pressing tab and so I'm faced with uh, this again. Now I run you through suns because suns can be quite tricky. When I normally map I don't normally use suns because I find that they add a really nasty uh, lighting to the to the actual map itself and when you're trying to take, say, pictures or something, uh, the sun will create a really irritating glow. So we're going to make this one pretty far away. Now we're going to make it so it's uniform with the actual system. So it's going the system's basically pink and purple, so we're going to make this uh, similarly pink and purple. But we're going to have it quite, da um, quite dim so it doesn't have too much of an impact on the way our ship lights up. That should do it. So it'll be slightly red, a little bit less blue, and barely at all green. And that's how that'll work. And it'll have an impact on the starbase. You can use the starbase as a uh, as a tool to sort of measure how it's lighting. You can see the purple parts just here. And that's the sun having that effect. Now other methods of lighting can include using this thing here, which is the camera. Now you double click on it and uh, you can change its angle by right clicking on it and so on. Now again I'm going to keep this quite dim because I like my uh, maps slightly darker than most others because after all it is space. So I'm going to have it at 55, no actually I'm going to raise it a little bit, 95, 55 and 15. So it's going to be pretty pink you can see the effect it has on this station here. It's a lot darker, a lot more, a lot more gloomy, and that's generally how I like it. Just make a uh, small twist or tweak to this. I still think that's pretty ugly. I don't like the massive blobs on that. So what I'm going to do is just have a play around with it. The best way you can make stuff that looks good is merely to experiment and I'm going to do just that because I don't normally handle these sort of nebulas, I normally handle um, advanced ones. Now that took quite a bit of time to load because firstly I've got high brightness settings and secondly I've got very small splats which means lots and lots of splats. So I'm going to increase these to 1200 apply and you can see instantly uh, it's quicker to respond although fainter and I wanted quite a strong uh, nebula. So I'm going to sort of compromise and go 500. And there we go. I'm going to reduce lighting down to 8. And I've got that. Now when I zoom out, it will sort of uh, change. But that's so the computer doesn't waste memory on stuff that's far away. Now, I can change more aspects of this. The purlin, which is basically what the nebula is, uh, can be altered to change the way it looks. So if I apply, uh, apply 2 
to the pearling noise type, it'll get a lot darker. But I like mine a little bit brighter, so I'm going to change that back. And also, you've got the pearling scale and the pearling layer. Now, I think the pearling layer is basically how many layers you've got. Some more layers will make it a bit more slower, or they'll make it look a little bit more textured. Pearling scale, if I change that to 3, similarly will get a lot slower, evidently, because I can't move my mouse right now. And it's changed. And it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more textured, but I think 2 is, uh, is worth 